Okay, the next part that we're going to be covering is this front uh, geometry setup deal. Uh, on this particular chassis, when I received it, it come just like it was on the uh, the picture there I showed you at the very beginning. But they literally have no, there's no solder on the flat part where the chassis actually attaches to it. Other than this, just this little bit of cold booger weld here, or solder job we'll call it. Um... It was in this pocket, and it was almost the point you couldn't even turn the guide flag. It was kind of pretty sad. But uh, whenever you're soldering, make sure you use a good soldering iron. It gets it gets nice and hot, and you're using quality uh, silver solder and uh, like an acid flux to make sure that your surfaces are completely clean. Steel wool it, you know. I mean, the cleaner it is, it's only going to you know adhere to a clean a clean surface. So make sure those get all cleaned up. We're gonna go through and redo that. Like I said, I'll tin this piece and I'll tin this piece, which means it'll have a co you know a little light coating of, s of solder on it, kind of like this here that I wiped off that they had all uh, over the place there. And you just need a very little drop of solder. You don't need much solder at all. Solder is very strong uh, if you're soldering correctly. Um, the other issue that this particular chassis has problems or issues with is being that the metal is so soft. Um, so this is, it's about a sixteenth of an inch out of square on this side. So I just take my finger and wiggle it back and forth till it stops. Do the same thing on the, on the other side here. This side's nice and straight. I mean, I can't, I can't move it, so that side's good. Now, it could have got bent in shipping, could have been, you know, production, it just, the, the mold didn't, it depressed in you know, bend it down all the way or something. These things are probably getting stamped out like in three seconds or something. But uh, what I usually recommend to do, is you hit the wall here, you know, um, may end up bending the rim or whatever, but when these are bent in, it creates a bind on the, on the axle so it can't spin. It creates friction because it binds. So to eliminate that, you can run a brace from down, down here in this corner up to the top part up here and then run another brace over to here. So it's 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 got a side angle as well as a parallel angle to hold it to braces. So it's it's not gonna move, it's not gonna go anywhere. Or I've seen guys actually take and drill this out and put a piece of uh, brass tube all the way across here and leave like a little 16 stick out on each side and then uh, go ahead and solder around on the inside of that brass tube and then your axle will just slide in the side of that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you can leave that little 16 stick out, or you can just sand it so it's smooth with the uh, the outside there. That's kind of your personal preference of what you want to do. So that's just a, a couple little heads up on things that we're going to be doing here with this particular chassis. I'll do uh, videos as I go through and do each uh, each piece step by step, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. Like I said, the biggest thing is you just want to make sure everything's is straight and square and Friction on a slot car is like running with a parachute, you know, you can still go. If you can eliminate as much drag as you can or friction, um, it, the car just moves fast. Everybody's like, well, I don't know how he's so fast. Well, the guy's spent a bunch of time uh, reducing friction points and bind and flex and all that kind of stuff on chassis. So, with this particular chassis set up the way that it's, it's put together... Uh, and it's thin metal. It's going to flex. It's going to bend. That's just by the nature of the beast of what it is, you know. And then the chassis itself has actually got four bolts that uh, hold it together, so you can slide uh, to make different wheel bases. So you know, you have multiple chassis adjustments here for the wheel base as well as the, the three holes here in the front. So, anyways, I'm going to cut this one off. And uh, next video we'll come back and we'll start uh, we'll start doing a little tuning and a little tweaking on things and. Uh, Try to help you get the best uh, H&R product uh, type of chassis out on the track as you can. Uh, again, just keep in mind it's a $50 chassis. Um, you know, it just it's kind of frustrating. You spend 50 bucks and you still got to do a bunch of work to the chassis. But you know, it, it is what it is when you run this particular type of setup, and, and and we'll just make the best of it and hope that the car goes good and. It's just kind of a flip of the coin if, if you're going to go good or not good. Everything that I'm doing with this chassis is going to help me 
be a little bit more consistent as a driver and get better lap times. Is it going to make it a racing chassis? I don't really think so. I don't know that you could ever make these into a racing chassis. We're going to do our Danvis to try to get it to go around the track as good as we can and, and make it drivable. Stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.